so hey guys thank you so much for being here and already see the um the uh, the comments section or uh, is is going off let us know if you can hear both of us now if there's any echo any of that i think we got it sorted out but thank you so much for being here today we're going to take a little time to talk about Pekin's new final expense product and they've had uh, they've had pro life products, tons of life products for a long time, um, but there's always been an, an issue with uh, being able to break into the real big final expense market. And this product is is the the savior of that type of market. It's one that levels the playing field on compensation and things like that, um, a as well as adds a lot of new bells and whistles that makes it easier to do your standard final expense business with Beacon. And the cool thing is too, I think as you as you break in with that market to understand the depth of uh, how many different types of life products and how um, how easy it is to do business with Pekin, those are things that you know, will make you wanna do more and more business with them. So um, we're gonna talk about this product, but you know, I, I think it's a great way for you to build a relationship with Pekin and then find out how deep their product portfolio uh, and level of service goes. So, John, thank you so much for taking the time. Sorry, I, sorry, we got the the tech start we did, but it looks like we still got a good audience here, and I want to go ahead and see if we can help them out. So, what's going on, buddy? Uh, not much. Happy to be here. Awesome, awesome. And tell me again who you have with you. I have Eric Shane, our Vice President of Administration, and Zach Angel, our Operations Manager. Perfect. All right, so we got Eric and Zach. So, um, and and I'm uh, I'm excited to hear about it because you know we've talked briefly about the final expense product and and looked at schedules and things like that. But um, I wanted to hear it from you guys. You know what's going on. So, what um, what was the? I know we we you've you've had plenty of life products, um, and I think maybe maybe over a year ago you guys or even before that started identifying that it was hard to break into the big final expense market that's out there in the recruiting world due to certain things. What prompt, is that really what prompted you or what was the prompt to redesign and, and push out this new final expense product? Yeah, exactly. It was feedback from the field going out and seeing agents, which we're happy to do. And the biggest thing that we heard was automation. Um, so this product certainly brings a heavy load of automation. Um, from the quoting process to the application. And as you're submitting the application, we're doing the underwriting in the background for you. Uh, by the time you get done filling out the application, you'll know whether that policy has been approved, whether it be for a graded, a modified, or a level final expense product. And we can even send the policy to you electronically after that. Perfect. And, um, you know, as, as we've gotten in, there, there's, you know, a tremendous amount of final expense products out there, just like in the Medicare supplement world, as we built our an early relationship with you guys on the Medicare supplement side. Um, what do you think are standout features? You know, obviously the tech side of that is, is good to be able to know, um, you know, that something is approved before you leave the house makes it saves you a lot of second trips, and things like that. Um, what else do you think about this final expense product makes it a standout uh, in in that kind of crowded market? And I, I will interject. I think one of the things that's good is if you work with a company that that's pretty much all they have is a final expense product, it can get confusing to have a ton of different, you know, one off companies, one med sup here, one final expense here, one, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so one thing I think is good about you guys having the depth of the portfolio to get in the house and build a relationship with one team where you get in and final expense is not the product for this household. Well, you guys have like transitional um, term life policies. You have a lot of different things that are um, available that a lot of final expense carriers don't have. So having that depth and building a relationship with the carrier uh, to give you that. But on this product specifically, uh, what are some of the standout features you think you guys uh, – Will win with well i mean as i said the three features that we wanted were automation competitiveness and then compensation um, i think the knowledge based questions is kind of a unique feature that we have uh, maybe zach you can touch into a little bit how that works yeah so we've uh we've ingrained a new signature process within the application so that we're no longer sending out electronic emails back and forth to try to get 
uh, signatures that way. Now, the, through the application, as soon as you launch into it, you sign the HIPAA via a knowledge-based authentication process, which is three to four um, very specific questions pulled from um, public data on the applicant themselves. They answer on the screen. If they pass that knowledge-based um, quiz, then their signature is applied directly to not only the HIPAA, but all forms. And uh, if you were to fail, we've built in a secondary fail-safe signature process um, known as text PIN. So if you fail that KBA, the cell phone number pre-fills from the application, agent clicks send, PIN goes to the applicant, applicant reads off the PIN number, agent keys it in, and that acts as the authentication and signature process. So our new um, streamlined signature process is really um, kind of so that's cool process. because it'll just text them a code and you can put it in. So there's really no tech involvement on their side other than just reading the text. Correct. Because some tech signatures, you know, require you to, the, the applicant to click it and then mm -hmm. go and do something else. And while we get, we're able to get a healthy amount of people to do that, the less technologically, you know, uh, the technology they have to be involved in the better so yeah just reading a text would be much better i don't think i don't know of any that are doing it that way i may there may be some but i don't know of any doing it that way so that's pretty cool so yeah now on compensation you know that's a big one and uh but we're not going to get into specific numbers um but more of, of a about the transition from the compensation schedule because my uh, my history with Pekin's fi original final expense product was that they were rate busters I mean you know you guys were competing with the, the best rate in the you know market you know it was like you guys and maybe a couple other carriers right up there pennies from each other in that um, but then the compensation was low and then the lower and then the uh, underwriting could be quite tough um, so how did we adjust, you know, because, I mean, there's only so many pennies in a dollar, but at the same time, we're staying competitive uh, with carriers that final expense agents are writing, which may have not been those rate buster companies because a lot of those products were very difficult to get approved in that market. Um, so staying competitive with the, you know, Mutual of Omaha's or Ascendos of the world that are getting a lot of that business right now, um, but still paying a compensation that also puts you kind of right in line with what they're doing. How do you even, how, I mean, I, I guess that's a big actuarial question, but to sit down and adjust uh, things to figure out like, okay, now we can pay X amount more and still keep our rate good and loosen the underwriting slightly to, you know, let us be able to get in some of those people that used to, you know, have trouble getting through. Um, you know how much how much pushback do you guys get on that conversation <laughs> well i mean i think that a lot of it when we talked to our actuaries a lot of it was the fact that we hung our hat on it being automated so it's taking the underwriter it's taking data entry it's taking policy issue it's taking all of those steps it's taking our uh, underwriting assistant out of the equation which all that underwriting um, expense gets built into pricing um, the fact that we're taking all of that out and, and saying this is going to go straight through, even paper apps go straight through for us, you have to key it in, but it, it skips all of those other steps. The fact we're able to do that, I think, made us be able to be competitive while still paying that commission. Um, yeah. I also believe evidence is involved, too. So now we're able to get more underwriting data with less evidence yeah. and be able to make a decision with having to pay for less evidence. Yep. And... Um when you're when you're bringing this uh when, so this is a, a question that i know a lot of people are going to ask uh, sooner or later in here it, when will this product hit in the states that it's the initial states it's being launched in uh, when will it be you know for instance in csg or in insurance toolkits the quote engines most people are using uh, csg has the information to get the rating on there um, i haven't checked this week but it should be on the rating websites very soon. And we're ready. We're launched. We're ready okay. to start accepting. Have you guys gotten uh, in with uh, insurance or final expense toolkits to get the data in there? Because a lot of people are starting to use that one as well. If not, I can connect you, of course. Yeah, if you would. 
Perfect. Yeah, we need to get you in there. There's a lot of a lot of our agents are starting to use them. Uh, they have a, a really good underwriting um, kind of pre-filter that helps people avoid submitting business with companies that don't want that business from the the start. So um, they, I'm sure they'd love to load you guys in now that you have a product right up their alley. Um, and uh, you know, getting the start date or, or the data is out there. Uh, what are the initial states that you guys are going to be pushed in? Because I know you sent me a map last night, and um, and then all of, of those states are there. I know Pekin has a thing called blackout states from some old deals. Are this, is this product part of the the same blackout states uh, within Illinois and a couple of others? Or yeah, Illinois would still be a blackout state. So the main focus i would say southeast uh, it's north carolina virginia alabama kentucky tennessee i'm going awfully quick mississippi georgia louisiana texas and then we also have a presence in michigan missouri nebraska kansas and we just moved into utah okay perfect and as uh i think arizona is a blackout state correct right? okay yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. So John Sahakis is wondering why not South Carolina? I, it, John, we just have to make a case, buddy. Are you going to write a hundred million in premium in South Carolina? Because they'll launch there for that. Yes, we will. <laughs> We've got it surrounded, so we're ready. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anytime you guys are uh, that are in the chat that are looking for a state, if you know, it's all about you know economics and looking at what's possible somewhere so if somebody has a, a good case where there's going to be a tremendous amount of business somewhere um let us know we'll try to pass that along and, and i'm sure that these guys will take it into their research of where uh, where to to look at filing for sure so um okay so we do have a good footprint though those are some really good states and a lot of you guys that are uh you know writing telephonically you know can write in all those states they're very telephonic friendly states as well so that's probably goes into the thinking of where to expand what dois are easier to work with than others so um and you're in mississippi so you know that's a pretty good state <laughs> <laughs> it's our best so what else uh what else is on the horizon for peak and final expense what uh what do agents need to know when they're uh, considering writing Pekin or trying to get involved with Pekin? Well, I think it's important to know that we do offer an incentive trips. Um, I know a lot of the guys in your office were excited. So we have a trip to Canada every year, a fishing trip up to Ontario, Canada. And we have kind of a pick your paradise is what we call it. If they would prefer, they can go on the fishing trip or we have, we're going to Palm Springs. Okay. Uh, next year for production this year. Awesome. And um, when, and so, yeah, obviously trips are a pull because uh, actually John Sahakis, who's on here, he, he's, uh, he's what some people might call a trip whore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when we're going to be in Cabo together in July. So, but yeah, there's some people that really like, uh, like trips. So um, I went on several early on and there's a lot to like. Plus you get to network with other people that are doing you know significant business and typically those are the best people to learn from so um yeah so when we're looking at um at writing pekin too from my experience pekin is a company that if you get used to some of the tech companies that are hard to talk to over the phone you know they you can get very dependent on their technology um and pekin makes a, a tremendous tech push they have a huge huge IT. I was joking with them earlier. They have a humongous uh, IT department when I was up there. Um, but the cool thing about Pekin is when there are issues or when there are, you know, questions or when you're trying to build a relationship and find out about other products, things like that, it's a company that's pretty easy to pick up the phone and build personal relationships with the employees. If you've been to Pekin, Illinois before, if you've been there, by the way, put in the chat that you've been to Pekin, Illinois. <laughs> I have. <laughs> Indeed, um, but I don't know how many people have been there, but Pekin is, you know, a community where the people that they're hiring to work in the hiring pool um, are just genuinely, you know, hardworking people that are looking to please, um, you know, people that they're working with, the people that they serve, and they're easy to get along with. So not a lot of, uh, you know, sometimes if you're dealing with a company, I don't know, New Jersey, 
you might have, uh, if you're from the Southeast, you might not know how to communicate with those guys, but these guys from peak and Illinois are great to, uh, to communicate with and easier, easy to deal with. So that's been a big selling point, but anything else you guys want to add on, uh, what is making peak and final expense and other peak and products stand apart? Or if you want to hit on any of these other products while we have the attention of people, because some of these other products are, uh, are, are different than what's out there as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I can I can hit um, probably our one of our most kind of standout products that we have is our transitional life. Um, it's a it's a term policy, but you're also in the background taking portion of that term and paying a, a paid up whole life with it. So um, if you choose a 20 year transitional life, there's a, a 20 pay whole life in the background that's getting paid for with the premium as you're paying. So at the end of that 20 years, a typical term product, you're left with nothing um, in most cases, um, except you just basically rented some insurance. Um, and hopefully you didn't need to use it. Uh, with the transitional life, we kind of combat that with there's a paid up amount of that of that face amount that's paid up at the end. It's building cash value. Um, so you can do several different things with it. Um, you know, you have a death benefit. You have some cash value if you need it at the end, too. Um, so it's, it's kind of a, it's a hybrid type product. Um, it's been very popular since we've released that. Yeah. Good for the young couples in the beginning, if they have a mortgage or if they have a college expenses. So you've got the big term coverage and at the end, you've still got 25 or 50,000 of whole life. Well, a lot of life agents, when they're pitching in that market too, they're pitching by term and by, you know, uh, an IUL or a, per or a whole life policy together. So this basically satisfies that concept with one policy. I mean, yeah. uh, I, I'm surprised more people haven't done it, but it's the peak and is the only, that's why I brought it up earlier. Um, when we, when you guys showed it to us before, it is a very unique thing. Um, you guys also have, uh, some interesting, um, uh, products for, uh, I think it was a single premium whole life with, um, I'm going to long, like long-term care concepts built into them as well. Um, a lot of people are always looking for that and Pekin does have that. So that, that's also what I'm talking about when I say Pekin has the depth of product um, to where you, if you're building a relationship with a carrier, it's great to think about, you know, if you got three companies that are virtually the same and they all have one final expense product, that's, you know, comp is, you know, within five points of one another premium was, is within a few dollars. Um, but one of those companies also offers transitional term. It offers, um, other types of, uh, guaranteed life policies as single premium, whole life a Medicare supplement, and they have the depth. Well, it just makes sense to me to try to build a relationship with that carrier, uh, because, you know, you're going to run into these other scenarios. And now if I've been writing, you know, TNT insurance for just their final expense product, and then I need Pekin for this one other policy, but I have no relationship, it's just going to be a, a harder. Whereas if I've already been writing all this, you know, final expense with Pekin, and then I come back and say, hey, I got this weird case where my neighbor needs both uh, term and whole life, really, but I want to write this transitional life policy. Now, if you don't know anything about that, you already have a contact there. You've probably already been communicating with them. You just email them, boom, get it set up, and uh, they can walk you through those. So to me, that matters. It is a relationship business. And uh, just like uh, this other Justin here said, that they really appreciate the small business type interaction, you know, the Ma and Paul style. And it's funny because if you haven't been to Pekin's headquarters, um, you don't, you wouldn't know, but they're a very, you know, robust company, you know, by, you know, assets and, you know, premium on the books and all that is by no means a small insurance carrier, uh, hundreds and hundreds of employees. I don't even know what you guys are up to. I think when I was there, it was like seven or 800 employees or something. So, um, you know, sizable operation and a long, long history, very, very solvent. And, you know, you know but it still maintains a feel of being able to do business with a company that moves quickly and can help you uh, with things with that Ma and Paul style feel. So it's Ma and Paul style with big money in the bank because we all want our insurance companies to be solvent. You know, I know we have state guarantee associations and things like that, but really 
Um, I'd rather write a company that's going to be there for a long, long time. So I don't have to worry about, you know, coming back to somebody and saying, Oh yeah, it's okay. You're in receivership. That company's in receivership. Your policy's backed up by the state. Um, cause my dad was in the industry for a long time and he actually had that happen um, with a company back in the nineties. Uh, and it was with an annuity and the receivership issue with that company not being solvent, um, tied that person's money up for a while and it was kind of a pain in the butt to get it out of there so uh, you know with peaking you know being there learning about the financials and the solvency of the company the vision um the conservative nature in which they expand and the long long track record that goes behind them i would say they're probably at the the foremost of you know companies that are going to remain solvent uh, for for a long 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 time to come so uh that's important to me I like, I don't want to have to do business with new companies every two or three years. I want somebody I can do business with for, you know, decades and decades, as long as I'm in the industry. And I think Pekin has that vision and the, uh, the base to do that. So I appreciate you guys taking the time today. Uh, I know there's plenty of resources out there that, uh, for Pekin final expense, uh, we have the state availability map and we're going to get some more resources from John, uh, that we can send you. So anybody that has any questions about that, feel free to email us. Um, and of course, uh, Pekin has also uh, agreed to sponsor our podcast for the second quarter. So check out our podcast over the Insurance Gurus podcast. It'll be on all major podcast platforms. We'll be talking more about Pekin and, and um, trying to connect you guys with them. So if you need anything from them, they'll be here. And we appreciate you guys taking the time to be on the webinar today, both Pekin and all the viewers. So thank you so much. If you missed part of this, we are recording it and we are going to send it out to everyone who registered. Um, so we had a couple uh, at, at over 100 register for the uh, this this podcast or this uh, webinar. Um, but we're going to get it out to as many people as possible. So thank you guys so much for being here.